temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so now, please join us in our congregational song, I Am at Home in the Heart of God. I am at home in the heart of God. A greater good is what I accept. Yes, I'm at home in the heart of God. And all my needs are divinely met. The power of God is within me. First I believe and then I see. I'm filled with love and prosperity. I live the life I was meant to. I do the things I intend to. I know the truth and it sets me free. I am at home in the heart of God. A greater good is what I accept. Yes, I'm at home in the heart of God. I believe and then I see I'm filled with love and prosperity I live the life I was meant to I do the things I intend to I know the truth and it sets me free I am at home in the heart of God A greater good is what I accept. Yes, I'm at home in the heart of God. And all my needs are divinely. All fear and lack are behind me. Yes, all my needs are divinely met. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> ah, okay. As Monty Thy Python would say, enough of the silliness. <laughs> so this is the time at our service where we get to turn our attention inward and just get still and commune with that divine presence within. So I invite you after that nice arousing song, let's just get still and just turn our attention inward, closing our eyes. And for the next five minutes, I invite you to silently repeat the mantra, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Just continue to repeat that silently to yourself and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
outside keeps crashing in around us trying to break down in all that we believe the folks at the top they don't have enough and the way to tomorrow is stealing all our dreams but there's a constant in the middle Thank you so much, Joy. Great to have you here with us. Appreciate your being with. And thank you for being with us today for Virtual Church. We are so glad to have you with us. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, enduring today because I think we've all been enduring for quite some time. Uh, in our teaching in the Science of Mind and probably in many others as well, you hear the phrase that God is love. Now, um, for some reason this week, what came back to me was I remember in elementary school, an early English teacher talking to us about nouns, you know, all the parts of speech, nouns and verbs and adverbs and adjectives and prepositions. And I don't know why, but she was just in my mind, in my head this week. And in thinking about God is love, I think we have largely thought of God is love as a noun. Like it's this static, stationary thing. And yet, for us in Science of Mind, I think that God is love. Love is a verb. And like I learned in elementary school, a verb is an action word. It means you do something. You're setting something in motion. You're creating something. You're making something happen. Now, we teach in the Science of Mind that there is no God outside of love. You know, there is no God outside of the love that we make it our personal, mis our personal mission to express 
on a daily basis. Now, we all understand that you can have the most beautiful lamp in the world, right? Like I have, I have Tiffany lamps in my office. I really like them. I don't know why, it's just my thing, you know? So I have these Tiffany lamps in my office and they're beautiful and I absolutely love them. But if you have the most beautiful lamp in the world and it doesn't fulfill its purpose until it's plugged in and turned on, right? So why I share that is that I think we're like the lamp, right? And God, spirit, the infinite love of the universe is the electricity and the power that shines the light and love through us, right? So I don't think the problem is hate, you know? Uh, hate, where did that come from? Well, you know, I, I don't think I hate anybody. I mean, I really don't. I really don't think I hate anybody. I've been in the teaching a long time. I've been doing a spiritual practice for a long time. When I become aware of that, I really try to bring it to the surface and address it spiritually, and I treat, and I affirm, and I forgive, and I release, and I do all of that. So I don't think the problem is hate. I don't actually get up every day and say, oh, I hate this, I hate this person, I hate this person. I don't. I may disagree, but you know what? But I don't, I don't go to hate, and I think that we all have that capacity. But as a person, of spiritual consciousness, as a person on a spiritual path, I now understand that it is my mission every day to put love out into the universe. This is how we endure. See, because we are in the process of always adding more light and more love and positivity and good and joy and whatever that we can into the world of an uplifted nature, this is what enables us personally to endure through the difficult times because this is what we actually came here to do, to be putting that energy of love and light and healing out into our world. It must be my intention to put more love into the world. And so I say this because it, what's always manifesting, we teach in the science of mind, is our intention. So if my intention on a daily basis is whatever I do today, I'm going to put more love into the world, it must be my intention to get up every day and love people, right? It's not enough to say, I don't want to hurt anybody. That's good, right? Because to cause no harm is absolutely good. I'm totally 110% on board with that and the next step in our spiritual evolution is not just to say, oh, I don't want to cause any harm, but to actively be on board, to actively have a consciousness that says, and it is my mission here every day to express the love of God that is within me toward all people, toward all people. <laughs> uh, we don't recognize, I think, the power of our own mind. You know, um, People think, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to work on changing my thinking. I really am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really reconstruct from the inside out in the future. But, you know, the thing is, there, there are no neutral thoughts. We are either moving forward in love or we're regressing. We're becoming more. We're becoming better. We're becoming a greater vessel, a greater transparency for the light of spirit to move through us. Or we are just continuing to participate in our own endarkenment, which is the opposite of enlightenment, endarkenment. So, um, so we have to recognize that there are no neutral thoughts. And if I ask you this morning, how are you thinking? You know, I hope that, it's, uh, that your mind, your consciousness, your heart is filled with a love for other people. Because if you are, if what the predominant energy that emanates from your heart and mind out into the world is an energy of love, then you are experiencing heaven. There's no way you're not. But by the same token, anytime we don't love, we're creating a little bit more hell in our life. Now, let's just hold that and put it right here and say, I don't have to agree with everybody to love them. It's fine. I can have uh, an, a discussion with people with differing opinions, different ideas, sometimes extraordinarily different than mine, and I don't have to hate them. I can continue to love them. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to go set up house with them, but I don't have to hate them. I can love them and even have a healthy respect that they have perhaps a different idea about some things in the world than I do. Okay, well, that's, that's just fine. We're always in the process, I think, of healing and loving and growing in that way or we're attacking and not loving and actually in the process of diminishing ourself and our experience of life. So there's a phenomenal line in A Course in Miracles that says, only what you are not giving can be lacking in any situation. 
Wow, that's one of those ideas from the course that has really, really challenged me again and again and again over the years. And I've been working with the course in miracles, with a course in miracles for probably for close to 40 years, okay? And it still challenges me all the time. Uh, only what you are not giving can be lacking in any situation. Well, that is so contrary to the thinking that I have been brought up with. It's what other people are not bringing to the party. I'm not the problem, they are, right? That's what we say to ourselves. So it's tough to look at something like this. Only what you are not giving can be lacking in any situation. It's tough to look at that during the time of COVID, right? What am I not giving to this situation? So basic consciousness, the basic laws of consciousness teach us that you can only have what you are willing to give, right? So if you want love and friendship during the time of COVID or any other time in life, you have to be the one to give love and friendship out into the universe. Mm -hmm. uh, my experience will always be based on what I choose my experience to be. See, I think we miss this. It's so subtle. I think it's so subtle, but our experience will always be based on what we choose our experience to be. Now, I choose love. I choose peace. I choose compassion. I choose joy. And largely, largely, that's what I get to experience. And I know the same is true for you. What are you choosing? Are you not choosing? Well, now is time to start choosing. Any time between now and right now would be the perfect time to choose. When I remember people are doing the very best that they can, and I believe this is so, people are always doing the very best they possibly can at any given time, in any moment. I mean, they always are. And I'll take it one step further. I believe that you and I are also doing the best we can at any given time. If this is so, and I believe it is, why are we so unwilling to just bend a little, to be a little more forgiving, a little more gentle, and give other people a break. You know, and, and I think this is directly connected, that we are so rigid sometimes about things. Things have to be the way they have to be. We are so rigid about that, and then we wonder, you know, why? Why we're not having this fabulous life? Why there's not more love in our life? Why we're not thriving? Why we're not prospering? You know, and, and it's all connected. The truth is, science of mind teaches us it is all connected. See, we are so uh, um, what do I want to say? We are so convenience and end result oriented so often that I think we miss the process. And a lot of life, a lot of our spiritual journey, our relationships, our creativity, all of those things that add meaning to our life are very often process works. You know, it's not about a destination. It's not about the end. It's am I enjoying? Am I fully here? Am I fully present? Am I alive? Am I loving? Am I being my most conscious self when I'm scooping up after the puppies? You know, or when I'm making dinner, or when I'm vacuuming the house, or blah, 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 whatever that may be. You know, I understand the, that we, we love convenience. Um, all right, so I, um, I've been looking at these for months. I've been looking at um, uh, chopping blocks, cutting boards. And I've been looking and looking and looking at them for months. I have viewed hundreds of them on every site online. It's just, it's amazing how many wood cutting boards are out there in the world. And so finally, 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 I had to decide. Because of course, I realized not deciding, I wasn't getting a wood cutting board <laughs> by not picking one. So finally I picked one and it came. And I was so happy and I had the mineral oil because you know, when you get a new cutting, a wooden cutting board, you have to do lots and lots of coats of mineral oil uh, to, to keep the board uh, from not drying out and cracking and stuff like that. So it came, it was beautiful. And I put some cardboard out on the counter and I get the mineral oil and Every night for about the last four nights, I've been putting coats of mineral oil on this cutting board. And it's, and it's not an end result kind of thing. It's just a process. And the wood only drinks in the mineral oil as quickly as the wood drinks in the mineral oil. And part of that is just the process. In some places, it drinks the oil in really quickly. In some places, it seems to just sit there for a while. But that's okay. So anyway, so I'm, I'm, I'm just sort of involved in this process. 
And part of what I learned is, you know, there are lots of things that are just process. Not everything has to be destination and result oriented. So um, during this time of COVID, um, I'm happy to report to you that my, my cooking skills have, have, have improved. They've really gotten a lot better. Um, because um, obviously we're not going out. I go out to grocery shop and pretty much that's it. Um, so to not get bored with my own cooking, I needed to expand. I needed to branch out into new areas. And so all those things that I've been telling myself for years, someday I'm gonna cook, someday I'm gonna do this recipe, someday I'm gonna make this, I've started doing them. Um, and I've really learned a lot, and I've made a lot of mistakes. I have really um, wrecked a lot of food, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> well, because you know, when you're trying something new, it doesn't always come out. And the truth is, sometimes you try something and you just don't like it, which is okay. In which case, then I take that recipe out, I tear it up, I won't go there again. Um, so um, talking about uh, the cooking, um, I've spent hours and hours chopping, stirring, simmering, chopping some more, stirring, simmering. And I find, so at first when I started at the beginning of COVID, it was about, the, it was about getting food done, right? But now I find that as I surrender into the process, I really love it more. I'm trying to be awake and aware and conscious in the process. So, so here's an example. So the other day, I, um, I found this new chili recipe, and it looked pretty good to me. It was not, so I'm not going to share it with you. It was a lousy recipe. It really made me angry uh, because I spent a lot of money on the ingredients, and the end result was crap. But, um, so, so I'm not going to share the recipe with you. But I did have this big process of making chili. And you know, if you've ever made chili, you know it's a lot of processing. There's soaking, you know, and there's chopping and sauteing and stirring. Oh my God, it goes on and on and on for hours, right? Um, one thing I learned from this, do not, re do not, do not, at this stage in my journey, I cannot go rogue with recipes, okay? <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's just a waste of time, it's a waste of resources, it's a waste of money, and I, if I don't like the result at the end, I'm, I, I really sort of rrr, upsets me. Um, so now, I've decided when I cook, I'm only going to cook with the tried and true, you know, Julia Child, yep, she's, she's my go-to kind of gal. You know, I can trust Julia Child, if I'm going Italian, I trust Marcella Hazan. You know, she is the doyen of Italian cooking in America. So it's like, you know, I can still try new things, but I'm not going to put myself in that crazy position of um, uh, a not good result. See? So as I find that as, so here's what this is. I find that as I surrender into the process, I really love the process more. Um, I'm not interested, if I tell the truth, I, I'm not interested in what's easy. I'm, I'm interested in end results that are good. Good for me, good for other people. So along these lines, I realized that it would be very easy to write people off. People we have not forgiven, people we've disagreed with, people we don't like their opinion or what they stand for. Um, and, you know, and we say things to ourselves like, well, I can't deal with them, or they're difficult, or we just disagree on things. So what? So what? Snap out of it. Be an adult here. All right, we disagree on things, you know. We have to have the spiritual maturity to engage, to dialogue, to share, and I have to at least be open to you and your thinking. I just think that's essential. We're on a round planet. There are no sides on a round planet. I see that often my lack of participation is what gives me a particular quality of result. And by the same token, I often see that my wholehearted participation in things gives me a completely different quality of result. You know, there are no accidents. We've all heard this forever. I think accidents are God's way of remaining anonymous. And so my very human tendency that sometimes I want to show up not loving I think contributes heavily to the negative conditions in my life because I think it is of primary importance that as a spiritual being, what I came here to do was to replicate what God is and God is love. So if I'm not putting love into the universe, 
I'm not doing what I came here to do. And when I talk about loveless, it's not just toward other people. It could be toward myself. It could be toward COVID. It could be toward the world. You know, in um, Waiting for Godot, at the beginning of the play by Samuel Beckett, Waiting for Godot, uh, one of the characters says, the enemy is within. I'm paraphrasing really badly. It's been a long time since I've read this. The enemy is within. Now, I think that's true. Because in, in our teaching in the science of mind, we don't believe that there is an actual entity of the devil that's kind of skulking around the universe waiting to trip us up. We don't believe in that. Um, but what I would say is that if there is a devil, it would be in my head. Yikes, that's really bad news. And what I mean by that is um, my thinking, your thinking, which is tremendously creative by its own nature, but when we use our thinking against us to hold ourselves back, to keep ourselves small, to limit us, to make ourselves sick, anything like that, then that's when the enemy is within. So the tendency to perceive without love is, is, is clearly the problem. You know, we've been taught, I think from a very, very early age, that it's smart, it's, it's, it's realistic, it's prudent to be judgmental. But to the extent that we attack others, we're actually attacking ourselves. It's spiritual law. Do we not see that? You must understand. I have to understand, to the extent that I attack and criticize and judge others, I'm doing that to myself because in the mind of God, there's only one of us here. And although I'm, I think I'm pushing that energy out this way toward this person or that person, it's coming right back to me. That's the law, spiritual law. It's the law of karma. You know, that what you put out comes back. To the extent we don't give other people a break in life, we're not giving ourselves a break. That is also the law. Because we teach there is only one, and we are all it. We are all mind. We are all aspects in the one divine mind of God. The universe's job is to mirror back to us how we are being. So you can always tell how you're being in the universe by what the universe is mirroring back to you. So if we were hoping for some salvation, I'm here to tell you that our salvation comes from within us. That's, that's where it's going to come from. It's not going to come from something outside of us. No politician or party or group of politicians or leg nothing outside of us is going to save us. We have to get this, that there has to be a fundamental shift inside of our being, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, that our salvation comes from within. Every moment, every moment can be a healing experience because everyone we meet, whatever, what they're doing, uh, what they are to us is determined by what we are choosing to be to them. Mm -hmm. right? So we are not at the effect of, of old uh, tendencies or old thoughts of, 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 of not being loving. Uh, we are not at the effect of old limitations. We are not at the effect of lacks or illnesses or anything like that. Because of spiritual law, things work the way they work. This is why we never have to worry about other people getting their comeuppance. It's not your business, other people's comeuppance. It's really not. This is why in the Bible it says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And what that is pointing to is that's just pointing to that there is a law of cause and effect. There's a law of karma in operation, and you don't have to worry about it. People are always, always getting the effects of the karma that they have created. You know, do unto others as you would have others do unto you is the golden rule. If we would get that, we wouldn't need anything else on the spiritual path. But I know we resist it, so we'll keep talking. It's, it's not about what you're not getting, say, in a relationship or at, at your place of work or anywhere else. It's, and this is the hard part in metaphysics. We have to turn it around and say, okay, it's not about what I'm not getting. It's, what about, it's about what I am not giving into the relationship, what I'm not giving into the work, what I'm not giving into my creative expression. Why, you know, we, we don't just hang out here on earth. You know, in life, we keep going in the direction that we're going in, right? So the Christ within us, the mystical union of human and divine, right, is uh, where we say yes to God, where we say yes to surrendering. You know, it's, uh, 
Um, in the East, the, there's the symbol of the yin and the yang, and I love this symbol. It's a circle, but within the circle, half of the circle is light and half of the circle is dark. But in the midst of the dark, there is light, and in the midst of the light, there is dark. So this is a, a, um, the symbol from Taoism, the, in, the yin and the yang. But the yin, sur the yin energy surrenders to the yang energy, right? Uh, uh, the yin is the passive principle in this case, and the yang is the more active principle. We have often talked here in our church about seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added. If we go for God, all that is not in harmony with us, all that does not vibrate at our frequency will fade away. A true spiritual path will tell us to love one another. This is how we learn to love ourselves. Because people will say to me again and again, I don't know how to love other people because I don't know how to love myself. And it's like, well, this is how you're going to get to love yourself is because you're going to put some love out into the universe for other people. And when you go to bed at night, you're going to say, you know, I did some good today. In some relationships, I showed up as the person I want to be. In some relationships, I was patient, I was kind, I was loving. Okay, now we're getting some work done here. This is good. You know, and the negativity in our personal lives is connected in some way. I've thought about this so much this week. It seems to me that the negativity that we experience, and some negativities we experience again and again and again, and they seem to, like, dog us for years, I think that that negativity in our personal lives is connected in some way to our own self-hatred, to our own disapproval of ourself. Uh, we are consciously willing as spiritual beings to be on this path and say, you know, I'm here to love. Uh, where we have fear in our life, that clearly to me says, okay, the, the love is absent there. This is where I need to put love into my life, wherever I am fearful. Um, if we fight the fear, it seems to me that that's just going to make it more real because what you persist, what you resist persists, right? So our job always is, oh, I'm here to add love into this situation. We could look at our whole life that way, that wherever we go, whoever we with, our secret personal mission from God is you're in this situation, you're in this relationship, you're in this very moment to add love to it. To say I love God and do nothing is not it. Remember, we started with love as a verb. Love for God is not separate from love for people. Wow! It took me a really long time to get that. You know, sometimes on the spiritual path, I am just so slow at waking up. It took me a really long time to get that, you know, love for God is not separate from love for people. Could I say it simpler? Yeah, people are your spiritual path. That is our path in science of mind, I believe. You know, so like we chanted at the very beginning of our service, you are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. We have everything we need to endure and beyond endure thrive. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment, recognizing that right here, the place whereon we stand is holy ground. We are surrounded, we are filled with God's infinite loving intelligent spirit. It is the most true real thing about us. We are emanations of spiritual consciousness. And in this awareness of our oneness with God, our oneness with the principle of life, I hear and now declare that we are all connected with each other. That on the unseen side of life, in the mind that is God, there is only one. And it includes all of us. We are it. So in this awareness, I speak the word for us here and now that we endure, that we have everything we need to move through this time with grace, with ease, with love in our hearts, with safety, and to know that we come out on the other side as better versions of ourself. I know that we have right now learned all we need to learn from these difficult experiences. And if this is true for us, I know that these experiences can go, be released, never to return again. So I claim for each and every one of us that the way is made clear for God to be God in our lives in a greater way than we have ever known thus far. I declare that we are each transparencies for God's love to shine in the world, to raise people up, to heal and bless. So I give thanks for us gathered here today. I know that something good is emerging in consciousness for all of us. I know that we are kinder, gentler, more compassionate people. And so we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, all of those that we hold near and dear, and we see them in our mind's eye, and we know that right where they are, the fullness, the allness of God's Spirit 
is ministering unto them even now as this word is spoken. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world around us, so all that looks discordant, fearful, separative, we claim the oneness of God right there, that there is only one, and that one is love, and it's present right here, right now. We bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I know that we are healed and blessed by being together today. We just open ourselves, spirit, heart, mind, to the infinite presence and allow it to do its own perfect work by means of each and every one of us. So with a full heart, I say thank you, God, that this is the truth. I release this word into God's perfect law, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to be multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed.
That's how it's done, folks. If you needed an example of what Dr. Mark was talking about, putting love into what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you, Joy Barnworth. That was wonderful. <laughs> so, uh, a few announcements for us. Uh, first of all, donations. If you'd like to make a donation over the phone after the service, you may do so. Just call into the church office, 818-762-7566 and uh, we can take your donation via credit or debit card. And of course, you can still go online to nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that takes you straight to our donation page, and you can text the word give to area code 818-457-3419. And of course, many of you like to send in your checks. However, you are supporting us Thank you so much. We love taking that in so we can still be here to support you. Um, prayer with a practitioner will be available after the service on Zoom. If you're on Facebook Live right now, just go to our website, get onto Zoom, and we can hook you up with a practitioner for one-on-one -on -one prayer in a private breakout room. Also, you can mail your, email your prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs. Dot org, or you can call the church office and option four on the phone menu allows you to leave a voicemail message where you can let us know what you would like prayer for and we check those voicemails and emails every day and send them out to our practitioners so you will be well supported in prayer I promise you. Wednesday evening so we have our Wednesday evening service uh, meditation before the service starts at 650 the service itself starts at 7 p.m. And that's on the same links you're on right now uh, via Facebook Live or Zoom. We hope you'll join us this week for a really special and inspiring service led by practitioner Liz Racy. Some of you may know Liz as the director of our youth, our teen group. And her topic this week is, it's never too late I don't want to spoil it for you, but I know Liz has a really, really good story around that. So I hope you will uh, tune in for that. Our women's group uh, meets this Tuesday, uh, today, pardon me, on Zoom at 1 p.m. All women are welcome. So again, the link for that is on our website. Uh, we'll be having a memorial service on Zoom for our beloved practitioner Scott Vance. Uh, that will be on Saturday, February 20th, so a week from this coming Saturday. And that's going to be at 10 a.m. And again, that'll be on Zoom. The link for that can be found on our website, and all are welcome. 
our annual meeting. Uh, the annual meeting is for members of the North Hollywood Church, and it'll be held on Sunday, February 21st at 11 a.m. on Zoom as well. So that'll be right after the Sunday service. The Zoom link is actually the same link that we use for our Wednesday and Sunday services. And so if you normally join us on Facebook Live and you're a church member, we ask you to go to Zoom um, that Sunday, again, the 21st, so you can be uh, part of the quorum and uh, you can uh, be part of our annual meeting at 11 a.m. A notification letter was sent to you via email to all members. If you didn't receive it, please check your spam folder to see if it might be there or call the church office if you didn't get it. And we look forward to everyone joining us. So our Zoom virtual patio that continues every uh, Wednesday and Sunday, 20 minutes before service. You miss your fellow congregants, just get on Zoom for 20 minutes before or hang out after the service and you can visit with the congregation and uh, the ministers. We all like to join uh, after the service. The men's group every Sunday uh, on Zoom from 11 to 11.30. All men are welcome. Our Zoom meditation continues Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. And uh, for all of these events, just go to the website, nhcrs.org, and you'll find the links so you can stay connected with us. And you can also sign up for our weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. With that, thank you again for being with us this morning virtually. Let's join together with the peace song. So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. 